just the child welfare experts and the health experts. And by the way, we have our health officer with us from Sacramento County, uh, Dr. Olivia Kassiri, uh, with us here tonight. She's also been very instrumental on the, on the uh, commission. Um, but that takes, it also takes the community. And uh, so we wanted to structure uh, the work of the Blue Ribbon Commission uh, on African American child deaths such that we uh, had various subcommittees that were dedicated to data research, uh, that were dedicated to looking at other communities that have had a similar uh, problem, a similar challenge, and how they addressed it so that we don't uh, spend our time and energy reinventing the wheel. Uh, but we also wanted to go out to the community and understand um, more anecdotally uh, from the community what deficiencies um, you know, this effort uh, should focus on or what uh, you know, positive outcomes and what uh, what benefits uh, uh, the community, or what has worked in the community in the past to help uh, address this, this uh, delicate subject. Um, and so this is not uh, the second community meeting. This is actually probably the, the ninth or tenth community meeting we've had on the subject since uh, last May. Uh, but this is the phase of this effort where we're beginning to uh, issue some uh, recommendations as a commission. Uh, we have kind of two levels of recommendations. We have kind of overarching recommendations and specific recommendations. Tonight is really about you giving us uh, feedback through a, a professionally uh, facilitated environment um, about uh, some of those specific recommendations. Uh, this is your opportunity to really affect uh, what will be presented ultimately to the Board of Supervisors on May 7th. Uh, this is all designed so that we have a set of recommendations that are very well thought out that are presented to your board of supervisors so that I and my colleagues uh, can make some uh, very deliberate decisions uh, in the future about things like budgetary priorities. And so if, uh, if you think, unless you think this is a, an academic exercise, it is not. This is really, uh, a, a, I think, somewhat of a rare opportunity, quite frankly, uh, to really affect um, how your uh, governing body at the, at the county um, will treat the subject moving forward in the future. Um, so with that, um, what I would like to do is uh, just maybe set the stage a little bit, and I'm going to leave it to uh, Kim uh, uh, here with the Threefold Communications to help uh, facilitate the groups um, so that we can actually draw out from uh, your experience and, and through some, uh, some questions, some specific questions we have, uh, your ideas and thoughts about uh, specific recommendations. Because this is such a complicated subject, uh, and you, you know you could do multiple PhD dissertations on on the subject of disproportional or unequal uh, death rates uh, by by uh, by different types and by di different ethnicities by different socioeconomic status. Uh, we really had to kind of limit um, our focus, and so what we wanted to do was uh, look at the overall dis disproportional rate. And just to kind of let you know what that is, in Sacramento County for the last uh, 20 22 years now. Uh, childhood population has been around 10 to 12 percent. That's the African American uh, childhood population in the county. The overall death rate uh, in the 20 years for that 20 year death report I mentioned was 22 percent. So, you know, why should the, the death rate for a certain ethnic group uh, be almost twice uh, what it should be based on its percentage of the, of the childhood population? That's kind of the question. But when you go into it even deeper and you look at the types of death, um, you find that the disparity is even wider. So what we wanted to do to really kind of narrow our focus and keep it very manageable is look at the four uh, types of death that are, are most disproportionate. Um, and if you have an opportunity uh, later, maybe uh, as we break up into groups, I would encourage you to come and look at this particular chart. This chart here mm. tells you what the percentage is of uh, African American children uh, who died in the, in the population by type. And what you'll see is that the number one type of death um, is 32%, uh, is, is uh, third party homicide for African American children. So again, African American children represent 12% of the countywide population, but they represent 32% of the third party homicides. And third party homicide, uh, just so you know, that mean, means a homicide that is not committed uh, by a caregiver. So it's usually someone unknown to the child. The second most prevalent type of death is infant sleep-related deaths, 31%. And so that should tell you something right away, that this is not just about um, criminal behavior. This is not just a, a, about um, uh, 
social behavior. Uh, this is also about education. It's also about you know how what what how we uh, educate um, parents uh, about things that we might take for granted. Things uh, simple things like making sure that we understand how uh, infants and small children ought to, to uh, uh, be in a, in a healthy sleep environment. The third uh, greatest uh, uh, disproportional uh, death category is what's called CAN homicides. And CAN is, a, is an acronym, C-A-N. It stands for Child Abuse and Neglect. So it's Child Abuse and Neglect Homicides. That's at 30%, again, compared to 12% for the childhood populations. And then the fourth and last uh, area that we really focused on was looking at uh, deaths attributable to perinatal condition. And uh, those can be anything from uh, malnutrition um, or the use of drugs and alcohol uh, while uh, uh, mom is pregnant um, uh, to other what we'll call the social determinants of health that we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, but again, this, this um, tells you that this again is not just about uh, necessarily the criminal environment uh, that some might just kind of jump to conclusions about. Uh, about this particular population. So with that, um, what I would uh, again encourage you to do is come up and take a look at some of this information on this poster when you have an opportunity. <clears throat> I've been mentioning now a number of times uh, what we call social determinants of health. And this is a chart that's intended to try and summarize the best command editorially uh, what we mean by that. And um, what we mean by that are, are basically the environmental influences uh, that affect um, health and, and, and welfare of children and families. And you can see it kind of it starts at the, at the general level, the socioeconomic, uh, cultural, and environmental conditions, uh, things like the work environment, education. Uh, a good example is if you look at the uh, BC epidemic and you start to look at access to healthy foods uh, in certain neighborhoods and maybe not so much in other neighborhoods. And then you, you begin to compare and contrast uh, the, the death rates and the general health of children and families in those neighborhoods. And I should point out, we don't have it up here, uh, but we did do uh, the, the uh, child death reports actually contain quite a bit of mapping information. So we have some very specific information relative to neighborhoods at the neighborhood level here in Sacramento County. For instance, we know uh, which types of deaths uh, these death rates that we talked about um, occur most prevalently in places like Del Paso, Park, Valley High, Meadowview, but also in some places that we're kind of surprised to learn, like Arden Arcade. Um, and so that, that that was really kind of the, the substance, part of the substance of what was communicated back last May when we first introduced the subject to the community. Uh, but you should keep in mind that there is a strong kind of geographic element to this. And then lastly, um, just in terms of the overall structure of what, again, what we're trying to achieve tonight. Um, again, because it can't be such a complicated and complex subject, uh, what the commission uh, decided to do was to come up with some overarching themes or recommendations, and then really try and draw from you uh, what you think some specific recommendations ought to be that are presented to the board. And that will really be the substance of moving forward. Just because the work of the Blue Ribbon Commission is coming to a close, here shortly, and the Board of Supervisors is going to receive the recommendations. You'll note that uh, as we go through these, that one of the uh, essential recommendations is that the work not stop, that we actually have a steering committee moving forward that is funded, that has the staff resources to continue this good work and to further understand the problem, but also to monitor the progress more importantly. So I'll just read these very quickly, and then I'm going to invite uh, Kim up to uh, direct us for the balance of the evening. So the first overarching recommendation here is to consider the, the interest and well-being of children in all program policy and budget decisions. Uh, what you won't necessarily see, I think, from the, from the commission, are very surgically precise policy recommendations, at least not now, uh, in terms of you know, how do we you know, uh, adjust personnel in, in child protective services, for instance, to where we think we, they, they ought to go. That'll be something that really kind of comes up from, comes out of the, the further work of the steering committee. Uh, that'll be something I think that the Board of Supervisors will be considering in later months and years, uh, in addition to uh, how we assess our budget priorities. And, and maybe assessing our budget priorities still given the fact that we have a very resource scarce environment. Uh, 
Uh, number two, uh, collaborate, uh, collaborate with other initiatives addressing the underlying social and environmental determinants of health, such as living conditions, poverty, access to resources that impact health disparities for the African American community. Um, this is intended to remind us that we should we shouldn't uh, lose sight of the fact that we're not the only community that has this issue. Um, there are other uh, initiatives that have kind of parallel intents, and we shouldn't um, uh, uh, necessarily dismiss that as an additional resource uh, moving forward. Number three, uh, prioritize and support existing and best promising practice <coughs> efforts that are shown to reduce the disproportionate African American uh, child deaths. Um, again, uh, this is intended to reflect the fact that there was substantial research uh, uh, commissioned by the by the uh, Blue River Commission. Um, to look at other what other communities have done and really to take from that uh, experience what we can uh, so that we don't reinvent the wheel. Fourth, engage and empower members of the African American community to help implement, inform, and advocate for culturally appropriate strategies. Uh, this begins to really address the fact that uh, once we have the substance of what it is we, we want to try and achieve to affect change, decrease uh, uh, mortality rates in the African American childhood population. It really is going to be a lot about education and communication. And you know, you can have child uh, welfare experts and health professionals uh, all day uh, talk at you, uh, but I, ultimately, it's going to take the community itself to really understand from the people it trusts and the people that it finds credible uh, to really begin to to uh, affect change. And that means the folks that are, for instance, in our uh, faith organizations. Um, it could be uh, folks that are in local business, the local business environment. Number five, launch a coordinated community education prevention campaign with mess messages addressing the top four causes of disproportionate child death in the African American community. And that again leads to this chart. Number six, establish a diverse steering committee to effectively implement recommendations and to partner with the African American community and elevate programs to have lasting impact. The steering committee is going to really have to, is really going to be kind of the central nervous system of us moving forward uh, and con con continuing the momentum uh, of this effort. Um, it's not to do the, precisely the, the exact same work that the commission has done, but the commission has really brought to the surface uh, kind of a general framework in, in which to work. And the steering committee's job, again, is really going to be to come up with those precise uh, proposals, perhaps on an annual basis, and certainly working across agency. It'll be working with the likes of the first five commission, but I suspect it'll be working with uh, our, our county department of health and human services, child protective services, and others uh, to really develop those uh, precise uh, applications that the board of supervisors ought to consider um, as it uh, prioritizes its budget and as it uh, considers uh, how to allocate resources. Uh, Seventh, and finally, uh, improve data collection and data sharing across systems to access critical information, monitor change, and evaluate effectiveness. So again, because much of this is really data driven, as much as it is uh, uh, kind of anecdotal, uh, we ought to uh, make sure that we stay focused on what we can measure. Uh, it, it's very, it could be very tempting and very easy, quite frankly, to um, think we're making progress or hope that we're making progress and fool ourselves into making uh, uh, the progress we're not really making uh, if we don't have real measurable outcomes. And so that's there to remind us uh, of, the, of that fact. So with that, um, any questions before I hand it off to him? Yeah. Are you going to summarize the recommendations that have been put in the draft? Well, these, these are, yes, yes, yes we yeah. are. But these are the overarching recommendations that I wanted to first summarize. So we're going to, when we break down into our group, we're going to talk about more specifically uh, the, the other recommendations that are uh, on, in the materials that you have. And I think they're color coded sheets. If I'm not mistaken. Yes. Okay. Can you clarify for me when you say commission versus, I think you said steering? Uh, sure. Is yeah. the commission the board says? Right. No, the commission, the Blue Ring Commission is, it was designed to be a temporary commission. So it's a commission that I assembled, um, I called together, and it involves um, child welfare experts, uh, faith leaders, uh, certainly uh, many of our department heads, uh, whether it be from the Health and Human Services and other departments have been very engaged 
um, from the educational community. They've been engaged. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it was intended to be a real, a real broad array of uh, interests that obviously have a, you know, a vested um, interest in making sure that we, we're addressing this appropriately. Um, but it was, you know, I don't want to call it an ad hoc committee because it was really focused on a very specific issue, but it certainly has um, a lifespan and it's coming to an end. Um, it's produced the work that we hoped it would produce, and that's the recommendation. That's really the guts of what we've asked the Blue Ribbon Commission uh, to come up with. Um, but that shouldn't be confused. Moving forward, the steering committee, that term is something that when I say and the rest of us will say for the, the balance of the evening, that's moving forward so that we can, that's a different group that's getting to point. But we'll, we'll continue to do things like monitor progress. Uh, and come up with even uh, more specific recommendations. And we might even modify those recommendations to move forward. And then there's the Board of Supervisors. And that, of course, is the, the elected body that is uh, hopefully, uh, those are my colleagues and myself that are uh, going to react positively to the, all this, this strong work that's been produced. You mentioned that the best policy practices mm -hmm. across other areas have been looked at. Is that information going to be made available? Yeah, I think we, we have some of the, the research that, I don't know if it's posted anywhere on our website necessarily, but I, so we, we will post that information on Supervisor Cerna's website in the morning, so it'll all be there for uh, all of the documents that you have in your, here on the table, and um, other material that we have, we will include on his website tomorrow morning. Yeah. Believe you. it or not, even though you might have a, what you think is a big pack of information tonight, it could have been a lot thicker. <laughs> Any other questions? One more. Yes. Um, so the board of suits will be voting on this come May seventh. May seventh, correct. And and what will they be presented with? Uh, our suggestions as well as correct. Okay. Yeah. So and and, and, it's, and it's, it's going to be a synthesis of these overarching recommendations. These are these are kind of a general framework that has really been decided by the commission. We want to complement that with some of the beginning to draw from the community what you think um, about some of the specific recommendations, again, that Kim is going to help uh, facilitate a discussion about. Will a budget be included in that? Or, I mean, I really don't there, know the gist of what they're voting on. There will be, I suspect there will be a, uh, uh, maybe not a budget per se, but there will be some financial implications to some of the costs, especially as it regards to the steering committee moving forward, because that will have to be staffed. Um, but that is something that, um, that the Blue Ridge Commission, I, I would expect, is going to be somewhat specific about. But that shouldn't be confused with, you know, budgetary recommendations for this year's fiscal budget for the county of Sacramento for, for let's say, again, using the example of Child Protective Services, beginning to shift personnel around and beginning to shift um, resources around within departments. But, but I do expect that ultimately that is what is going to happen. I mean, that is something that I've been fairly clear at the outset of this effort uh, really needs to be kind of the target eventually. But we also understand too that we have to work incrementally. This is not going to happen overnight. So if there are no other questions. Oh, sorry. Yes, sir. What is, what is the timeline for the implementation of the recommendations that are going to be voted on on May 7th? Uh, the, uh, in terms of, well, specific recommendations that will, for instance, uh, again, affect departments, I don't expect that, that would happen. Uh, you wouldn't start to see change there, for instance, probably until maybe later uh, this year. What I did, didn't mention is that um, you have the County of Sacramento, you have the first five commissions. First five commissions actually already made some decisions about its priorities or where it wants to appropriate resources. Help there have been some decisions already made about at least allocating funding once we get recommendations, solid recommendations from the to help initiate those those, uh, uh, those changes. It's not the same at the County Board of Supervisors. At the County Board of Supervisors, the beginning of implementation I think will be measured mostly by the commitment that will be made initially to the steering committee to make sure that that's funded. And I should also note not just, not just your county, but also we're going to be asking the health systems in our region. Uh, we're going to be asking some of the health foundations in our region. 
to match uh, what we're asking to come out of the general fund. Would the targets be set on how they are you set for the reduction amount that you want to see in each of these indicators? They, 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 have been, they have been set, and that's a great question. It's not, um, it's, it's one that a lot of very careful thought was put into uh, in terms of percentage reduction, reductions and the types so you of um, debt mm -hmm. type. Um, and then also Make not being to, uh, uh, too uh, optimistic, yeah. but also being mm -hmm. aggressive. We had to kind of do a more balancing act. Um, and then we also wanted to ask the question of you know, what really is statistically significant. And because um, we don't want this to be you know, spinning wheels, we want this to affect change. That's also what we want, we want this to be about. Kim? Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Uh, this is a wonderful opportunity because uh, the final analysis, Supervisor Turner works for you, right? So you have an opportunity here to inform his next steps, and we appreciate your time and your commission. What we'd like to do is break into four groups, um, each taking one of these disproportionate and high death causes. Um, and that means in this room that five or six people in each one, uh, what you're going to get then when you go into your smaller group is you'll, be, you'll get a full matrix of the actual recommendations that were made by that topic. And they're in four categories, education, direct service, policy, and data and evaluation. Mm -hmm. So you're going to see that level of detail for each of those topics. Does that make sense? And what we'd really like you to do is we'll, we'll get some volunteers here to help as scribes. There are three questions that we want you to drill down on as you look at that particular death issue. And you see them on the wall there, and your, your uh, facilitators will have them. We're going to ask you how you feel about the recommendations that have been developed. We're going to ask you how you feel the community will embrace the recommendations. Right? We need your feedback. It's <coughs> really, really important. And then, perhaps even most important, what do we need about? Right? So, what can you tell us that helps inform what ultimately goes before the Board of Supervisors in May? Okay, is that pretty clear? Clear as mud? Yeah. Is that how it works? Okay. Um, Jamie, I know you're going to volunteer. Nikki, could I grab you too? And could I have two other volunteers that would be willing to transcribe on pieces of paper 